So today we're going to talk about some of the natural approaches or drugless prescriptions that you can use beginning Monday to help your patients that have chronic pain. And it's important that you do that because when we take a look at how epidemic pain has become, we certainly need alternatives to the current model that's in place, which is predominantly a surgical and pharmacological model, which we all know about. It's estimated that pain is really a silent epidemic in the United States, with 50 million Americans suffering with chronic pain. So you think about the number of office visits that you have, the number of office visits that doctors and hospitals have nationwide, and we need a form of natural medicine, drugless prescriptions that we can use as, as an intervention to help those patients overcome both acute as well as chronic pain. Uh, it's noted also that an additional 25 million people suffer from acute pain. So you have those people that come with acute low back and leg pain, shoulder problems, neck problems, car accidents. It's an absolute a uh, epidemic problem. I mean, I think if you look to your right and look to your left, you're going to find someone that's a chronic pain sufferer, either chronic TMJ pain, migraine headaches, knee pain where they have difficulty getting out of a chair, walking up and down stairs, people who couldn't sleep last night because of back pain, people that roll over on their side with shoulder pain. So is our model going to be that we're going to use anti-inflammatory drugs, give someone a cortisone shot, send them off to physical therapy, and really maintain their chronic pain? Or are we going to use drugless prescriptions and interventions that in turn can have a profound effect, not just in terms of treating the pain, but reversing the pain process? It's estimated that two out of three people are going to suffer from some form of chronic pain throughout their lifetime. And the most common are the kind that you see in your office. Oh, doctor, my back hurts me, my neck hurts me. And we tend to use these kind of wastebasket diagnoses, which is, well, you know, we did your x-ray or did your MRI, and you have a little bit of arthritis. So take your NSAIDs, take some Tylenol, put some heat on it, nice on it, and learn to live with it. We need to transcend that model and actually address why the patient has pain, where they have the pain, why it is that they have the pain in that specific parts, and an integrative medicine model that we can use to start the process of reversing it. So that we can use tools, our hands, as one of the best methods of doing that. Several other people suffer from conditions like chronic lower back pain. That's epidemic. It's the number one reason why people are on disability in the United States. The number one problem in workman's compensation, people with chronic low back pain. And what's the current model in place? Stretching exercises, anti-inflammatory drugs, a course of physical therapy, and then people oftentimes getting started onto morphine compounds. We need to break that cycle. How many people now are seeing patients coming into your office that have chronic fibromyalgia? Interestingly enough, when I started practicing almost 35 years ago, fibromyalgia wasn't even considered to be a diagnosis. It wasn't really until the pharmaceutical industry got interested and thought, what drug can we make to treat fibromyalgia patients that there was actually a diagnosis and a treatment? But we know that that treatment is faulty, so that we need other mechanisms, acupuncture, chiropractic, laser needle acupuncture, prolotherapy, various forms of natural healthcare medicine to break this vicious pain cycle and help your patients overcome these problems instead of maintaining their illness. So how does it really affect us? Think about the things with your patients or with yourself that you just can't do. You know, you used to be able to go bowling, you used to be able to do push-ups, you used to be able to have sex, you used to be able to have play tennis, you used to be able to roll over at night and roll onto your hip and you've lost the ability to do those. So if you start asking your patients about their function, how well are they function, you begin to get the impression that most people are functioning poorly, they're losing, losing function, and they just start to learn to live with it like it's a normal phenomenon. What's the outcome of that? Well, everyone knows that because oftentimes it's treated secondarily in pain management clinics, in family medicine clinics, in physiatry clinics, it's treated as if it's a depression problem or an anxiety problem. But we need to take a look at anxiety and depression as an outgrowth of losing your ability to function, of living with a state of chronic pain, of never having any type of, of significant relief and carrying these problems as if you've got a, a chronic problem over a period of decades and oftentimes a lifetime. Anxiety is the most common reaction people have to the acute pain and depression for the chronic. So how much productivity is lost over this? 
36 million people missed work due to pain a decade ago. And 83 million people reported it affected their daily lives. You know, this is, you know, we're talking about literally one out of every three or four people in the United States having a significant impact. So how does that translate to you when you see patients next week and on Monday? And what are you going to do for those patients? Are you going to put them back into the same model that perhaps you practiced in, that you're comfortable in? Well, that's pain. That's chronic neck pain. That's a DJD of the knee. That's an arthritis problem. Take your medication. Get some physical therapy. Learn to live with it. Next. How is it that you can impact as a physician to alter that model? Or perhaps cooperate in your community with natural health care healers to break this vicious cycle and start using drugless prescriptions? 20% of the adult population experience chronic pain currently, as we speak. So it's recognized that 4 out of 10 people suffering moderate to severe pain are unable to find adequate pain relief. I mean, that's a travesty when you think about it. Not only are these patients suffering from pain, we have a pharmacological model in place and a surgical model in place, and yet when they see physicians, it's understandable why people are making decisions with their heart and their head and especially their feet. Why it is that when you question your patients and you say to them, well, you have chronic low back and leg pain, if you really ask them what they're doing about it, you find out they're going to massage therapists, they're going to trigger point therapists, they're going to chiropractors, they're going to Reiki specialists, they're using grounding, they're using all these various techniques that perhaps as a physician you could impact on by understanding these, incorporating these within your practice. And some of them are very simple techniques that you can use to modulate headaches, decrease neck pain and back pain, and start learning the skills to help people transcend chronic pain. So it's obvious that pain is inadequately treated. Drug and surgical side effects are common and often disabling. You know, it's recognized that 94 to 96 percent of all the back surgeries that are going on in the United States and worldwide are unnecessary. So we have a model in place that's predominantly a pharmacological and surgical model. It's certainly necessary, but we need to add to it. We need to have as our basic model a natural health care, a drugless prescription approach to this. Drug dependency, as you know, is epidemic. You know, when those pain patients come into your office and you have to have them sign a pain contract, or I remember as a resident, several of the residents would be extremely frustrated because they'd have pain patients. They'd go, oh, she's in here again with chronic neck pain. Oh, he's always complaining about back pain. And they view people as being drug seekers. And certainly we have drug seekers, but the vast majority of people have legitimate problems associated with chronic pain that when you touch them, you palpate them, you find their trigger points, you find their taut muscles, you find the joints that aren't working properly, and you impact on that with a natural form of medicine, acupuncture, chiropractic, prolotherapy, trigger point injections, you start to break the vicious pain cycle. So these are some of the things that we need to learn to do, especially too, to minimize hospitalization, ER visits, and death. What's the death rate just from anti-inflammatory drugs in the United States? 17,000 reported deaths associated with NSAIDs, very common prescriptions that people take all the time, and they become accustomed to taking because of media and because of pharmacological propaganda.